Welcome everyone. This is the Effects Masters program lesson four. All right, in this lesson we're going to talk about particle goals. We're going to continue talking a little bit more about uh, particle fields. And we're going to use this lesson then to uh, talk about stuff from uh, the BBC Planet Earth, so meaning the effects prototyping portion. Remember my, my, uh, my way of working where I cover some of the topics from the Maya effects power user, some of the basic things like the previous lesson, and then I try to apply them right away onto more uh, complicated stuff from the effects prototyping, and then soon we can begin to tackle some of the avatar effects uh, sections. Right, so um, as always, I wanted to remind you to refer to the effects power user program for more detailed, you know, attribute per attribute um, conversations. If you find yourself that um, I'm going a bit too quickly, or if I'm jumping ahead of something, um, you can always go back and use the effects power user as a as a learning tool as well. So um, the topic then for the week, like I said, we're going to talk about goals. We're going to talk a little bit more about particle fields. Um, this is the first episode of Planet Earth, like I mentioned before, and it does have some of the stuff that we want to that I want to talk about today. There we go. So. Typical uh, effect, let me just go back a little bit, probably, because I don't have it on QuickTime, it's a shame. But this is a typical kind of effect that you will find not only in the nature shows. Uh, for example, recently I saw um, the new Star Trek film, um, which I can't remember its name. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's Star Trek 3, let's say, of the new series. Um, and and the, main, the main thing about that, uh, film them the bad guys that they behave as a swarm so they do have a swarm like behavior and community and groups so this is not only for uh, nature but you can only it's being used quite a bit on films so this kind of you know overall group this is definitely a swarm so let's talk a little bit about this we're going to also cover uh, the swarm on our when we get to the point we're doing the um, the case studies there is one for the the, the earth stood still and you know that's Pretty much what I did for, for months and months in that film is working on swarms. All right, so I'm gonna go back a little just in case we need it for reference later on. We're gonna have it here. You've seen this reference before, I mean, many times. You may have seen it live if you're lucky enough. So let's see how we can get to something like this. Brand new scene. I'm not sure I can give you anything on the FTP this, for this lesson because there's, you know, we're gonna do it from scratch. This is not something I've been planning. I don't have attributes and values set up in my mind. We're just going to go with the flow. Do a little bit of a tool as well. If probably something simple, as, 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 uh, as you know that I like to keep it simple always in my lessons. Uh, so let's see how we can come up. So to begin, um, you need to make a decision as always of uh, remember the procedure. All right, if I'm going to be doing this for a shot on the show, what are the things that the, my boss or the director may change? And always remember, think, what is the worst thing that can happen, or, you know, the worst case scenario for me? And try to anticipate and cover yourself, cover your back. So let's say, well, these kind of shots, usually, you know, you don't see the, the particles being born. Um, they, they're already kind of cut to the, the behavior, right? The, the, already other particles are in place. Everything's starting to move, and so you know, as far as the the, the emitter type, you can you can be flexible with that. You can have multiple emitters, and that's probably what we can do. So I can show you a couple more things. Um, so to begin with, I'm gonna continue working on the effects menu as always, and I'm going to create. Um, there's no need to do uh, in particles yet for any of these things. It's just a waste of uh, resources. I'm gonna create an emitter, just a simple emitter. Well, this is not a simple emitter. It created a volume emitter because it was the last one that I used. We can keep it. But what I meant by that is that you can create a emitter, go to uh, the options, and then you can reset, reset settings, um, and it will create an omni emitter as well. I think the idea of having the volume emitter is not bad, so let's keep it. Just you know, so they're born in a little bit of a bigger area, not just just from a point. Uh, let's give ourselves some more time. Hit play and there we go. 
pretty much like how every effect begins, right? All right, cool. Get rid of the grid because we don't need that at the moment. And let's get start basic. Uh, particle goals, all right? So that's something that we haven't talked in this new uh, course. It's covered in depth in the previous one. We're going to use particle um, particle goals for many things. We're going to use them for this effect, of course, that we're going to do right now. We're going to use them to detect collisions on objects in a cheap way. We're going to use it to fake uh, footprints and impacts on geometry. Once we do like a like a big you know herd or a big pack of animals walking in the distance, generating dust impacts, we're going to use uh, particle goals as well. Um, Particles can be gold to surfaces, and we'll deal with that, you know, once once we get to that point. Um, but they can be gold as well to other particles. They can be gold to curves. They can be gold to you know a couple of things. And the idea of the goal is that the particle will have someone to follow. If it's uh, gold to geometry, uh, then they will follow the topology of the surface. We're not going to talk about that today, like I said. Um, but they can be gold, uh, that's the most natural results you get. Uh, they can be gold to other particles. And that's what we're going to do right now. So at the moment I'm going to continue like with what, with what I have right now without any, doing any goals. So you can start seeing uh, how things will evolve. Um, we're going to give ourselves uh, just a, a few particles to play with. You know, I don't want to keep the emitter on continuously, right? So to recap, if you're going on a list, so what are the things that my director can change? Just like it happened with the flock of birds from the previous lesson, probably two, I believe. Um, my director can change the amount of birds on the swarm or the density, let's call it in this case. And as you can remember, that is done with the count, the max count attribute right here. He can also, he might, he might change um, how they will divide into subgroups, for example, so if they, if they were followed multiple leaders. If you find reference, video reference of the behavior of those birds, they do. They tend to do that. And if you're thinking on a, on a film where instead of being birds, for example, it's just a giant army of ships, just to say something, those ships may have different squadrons, for example, or, or leaders to follow. So the amount of leaders or how many subgroups you have, it might be something that he will want to change. Um, overall, behavior, how close will they follow the leader, for example. That could be another attribute to tweak. Uh, overall turbulence, overall direction, um, well, things of that nature. What if they, for example, release from a leader and then go into another? Or they, or they the, the whole, let's say that, for example, happens on a film where uh, these ships are being controlled, you know, as a swarm, and they have multiple leaders, right? And then the good guys, as always, they go in and then uh, infiltrate themselves into the mothership and they break the communications. And then all of a sudden, the whole swarm behavior just breaks. And they turn and they, they don't know what to do and they just kind of randomly move. Okay, so that the ability of doing that at a particular time and then probably rejoining a leader later on. So uh, the ability of going in and out of a swarm behavior, that could be something to add as well. Um, so all those things are going to be covered, you know, probably in my little system, and I need to make sure that I have uh, enough flexibility to do it. So with that being said, let's see how many particles we have at the moment, just to get an idea. So there's about 15, almost 1,600 particles. So all right, let's say that we have, we're going to have for now to play 1,500. So the emitter will put out... 1500 particles and stop. I think it's a little slow, the, the you know the way they're coming out and coming into the scene, so I'm gonna probably speed up the rate. Alright, perfect. You've seen this before, nothing special. Okay, they come out in a spherical way because it's doing it's coming from a volume emitter where the away from center is activated. Alright, cool. Um, we know that because these guys, uh, in this example, they're birds and, and they're not going to die in midair. They're not going to disappear, right? So the lifespan of these particles, it's okay to stay as live forever. The conserve, remember that we said that, you know, 
unless it's for a very specific reason, it should never be one. So the conserve of my particles. Just I'm thinking, there you go. All right, so the conserve shouldn't be one, so I'm gonna put this 0.98. This is the repetitive initial things that you can do, that you have to do. All right, so there we go. They obviously, because they have now conserved, they lose energy. There's nothing else to you know move them around. Let's change that. Let's do our double turbulence thing from yesterday. But I mean yesterday, I mean the previous lesson, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna go to fields, and I'm gonna create a turbulence which I can rename, remember, let's just do a shorter, turbulence high. This is my high frequency turbulence, no attenuation. Let's see if 25 as a magnitude is gonna be fine. We select them and let's see. All right, I'm gonna move out so we can see them going crazy. All right, well, we have something. They're starting to look already like bees, maybe. But definitely have no purpose to, you know, have no one to follow. They're just moving randomly around. But it works. Um, if you saw the previous lesson, you know that having the phase attribute on this turbulence static is not really the best idea. So I'm going to put an expression on this. Create a new expression. You saw this on the previous lesson. If not, just go back one lesson and see how I did this. But basically, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm going to say time multiplied by 12. I'm going to put my finisher here. And then I'm going to use that twice more, just for the Y and the Z. And I'm going to offset this attribute Just a little, so we don't have the same the same number on each channel. All right, perfect. Cool. You can see we have all three. I'm gonna copy this right away and have it in memory because I'm gonna need it for my next one, my next uh, turbulence field. So let's see what it, what this does for us. There we go. Still feels like noise and it's normal. That's you know that's that's basically what it is. The way it should work. The high frequency. Nothing special. But I'm going to grab them again and I'm going to create another one. This guy we're going to name it turbulence, turbulence low, no attenuation. You see that I can work on the channel box and I can work on the attribute editor, it's the same. I'm going to grab my expressions in here, I'm going to paste them, but remember that to, you need to change the word, the name of the field for turbulence low. See, it's very, very quick. Once you start working along with these things, and another another little cheat that I do is just just I just change, for example, uh, set for by you know switch it with x, or oh, let's just put here y, and then put here. Um, let me see. There you go. So that way it's faster. Instead of me changing these numbers, I just change the channel, and they're all different. Let me make sure that I did this correctly. Phase it, X, Y, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the numbers are a little bit different on each one. Just to see the effect of one and the other, I'm gonna switch the turbulence high off, and I'm gonna to stick to this one and see what it does for me. And the frequency, I'm gonna lower it quite a bit. Perfect. This already shows you, right? What the you know the, the big impact that the turbulence low is going to have on the overall behavior of this thing. Um, if we go back to the video, you can kind of see these this shapes described here, and then they're similar to what we see here. Right? It's obviously calmer in the particular stage. So let's wait for. We're going to do this as well. This is very simple. You can see this is a, this is a clear example or uh, the beginning of the swarm or what I mean about when swarms don't have uh, specific leaders to follow. They're not broken up into subgroups. They just move as a group all together at once. So we're going to have to build all that in into a little system to be able to do this kind of stuff as well as more intricate, uh, well, the more, let's say, acrobatic. Let's just wait for the next one. I think it's coming. 
right? Here's a bit more active. We're still moving as a group. But then they start to subdivide and separate. There you go. You can start seeing here. So you see the, these curves, these shapes. Okay, so they're going to start coming through our turbulence load. That's why it's so important to have both. All right. Just continue to keep that around just in case. All right, perfect. So here's a turbulence low. Again, I'm pushing it a bit strong just for the sake of this example. All right, cool. Now let's see them both working together. Let's put down the 25. You see how different it starts to look already. There's no goals, but they're already feeling similar to what we're going for. We have a couple things to tweak and, and, and solve, and we're going to give ourselves a lot of time. Because this is something that is placed back so quickly because only 1,500 particles that you, know, you need a lot of time to study what's happening. But it's looking nice. It's working. And like I said, it's not. there's no goals yet. But you can kind of see a little cluster here and a little group over there. Quite a few lost ones around. So this is definitely going in the right direction with just a couple of fields. Wonderful. You see how important the turbulence is. It's always needed. Very interesting shape, nice distribution. This is a nice 3D object. If, it, if this was meant to be for a stereoscopic production, then it's great because you have a lot of depth. You know, you, can see they're distributed very nicely, you know, in a, in, a, in a volume, let's say. All right, perfect. So we have that taken care of. So for now, I'm going to disable these two particle, these two fields, uh, just by putting the magnitude to zero. We get simple particle behavior here. And you see the difference? You know, I want you to, to keep uh, mental notes or, or actual actual notes of, of what's, what's happening as, as we move around the, the lesson. Um, because you can see that just by disabling the turbulence fields, then this thing looks more to me like a beehive or a bunch of mosquitoes or just insects in the air, right? Or fruit flies or something. And I'm pretty sure that's something you're going to have to do at some point. For example, without going too far, an avatar. Avatar's jungle, which I don't know if I'm going to have one right on this video that I have here. I'm just trying to see if there's... So in Avatar's jungle, um, there is one very important effects element, which is... Um, I'll look for it later, but... Which is the, the little box in the air. So if, if you... Um, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that you have seen this film. If you haven't, just, you, you know... Check it out because it's coming on the course. Um, <clears throat> but if you see the jungles, the jungles feel alive. They feel alive for many reasons. The plants move and the lighting is interesting and the shadows are active. Uh, but there's also a pass of uh, little, little insects that just pollute the air. The air, let's say, that's just polluted. The same thing happens on a slower fashion, okay, on underwater scenes. Then you have little particles and you have like Finding Nemo or any underwater show. And you will see particles moving slowly on the surface that gives it that makes it richer that makes it more interesting and it definitely makes it makes it alive and just by switching the two turbulence fields and we start getting something that it can be used for another situation and that's my whole point with this prototyping part which is uh remember recycling recycle your effects and always find uh, applications of one technique i don't teach you how to do a specific effect i'm teaching you a technique that you can mutate it and combine it with other into something else. Okay? Very, very important stuff. All right, I think we're going in the very, very right, good direction very quickly. We're going to go ahead and save the scene. This is going to be the effects master lesson four. And I'm going to specify on my file just for myself that this is the swarm part. All right, cool. Good. I want to double check something here very quickly. I want to see this. 
All right, so one of the fields didn't take the change. So I meant that I disabled both and, and then we got the, the little fruit files and all. It's just by disabling the low frequency, right? So the high frequency is giving me the little noisy behavior. So we keep that for later. So we know that once we um, I want to play, or the, the, the higher the, the value of the low, turbulence low, the more of a swarm of birds or a flock of birds uh, is becoming. The less you have the turbulence low, then it's more of a random, um, let's say, insect-like behavior. So we keep that in mind. I'm going to take that one and switch it off. And the reason why I didn't take it is because I, I should have done that, select both, and do it in the channel box. There, it will take the change for both. So I did it in the attribute editor. That was that was my, my mistake. So right now, you will see that without the turbulence field, it's just a simple particle emission, which is fine for what I want to talk about. Perfect. All right, now let's introduce goals. Let's see what we can do with that. A simple way of doing a goal, you can select the particles. Like I said, they can be goal to surfaces, locators, curves, other particles. Um, I'm going to do with a locator just so you can see the effect very easily. I'm going to create a locator. I'm going to move this guy to the side. I'm going to probably, well, I could have duplicated it, but why not? Just create another one and put it to this side. I'm going to grab my particles and I'm going to select the locator and you're going to go to end particles and you're going to gold them. The gold is under the create you know, the end particles menu. So we're going to hit go to the options and there's nothing else other than the gold weight. I'll tell you what it is right now. Hit create. Nothing special will show up in your scene. It will just tell you a result in here and on the particles how do you know if it worked? If it doesn't give you an error, it means that it works. But if you select the particles as well, then you're going to have another attribute down here called gold weight and gold active zero. All right. I'll explain that in a second. Let me just see what happens if I hit play. And there they go. Uh, for the sake of the lesson, because these things move very quickly, this is 122 frames a second, that's, that's just too much. It's five times faster than what it really is. I'm going to put my max playback speed instead of free or real time, just so you can see it a little better. So you see it at 24. That's what the particles are doing. So very quickly, what happens here is simple. The particles, I have told the particles to gold themselves to a point, pretty much, because the locator is just a little point. This is just the handle to be able to select it. But it's not that the locator is the entire thing, it's just the center. I have told all these points, 1,500 points, to gold themselves to that particular point in space. Um, and I have told them to use a gold weight of 0 0.5. The gold weight is a number that goes from 0 to 1, and that's just think of it as a percentage of attraction between the particles and the points in space. So 0.5 means that it's a 50% attraction. So what happens? Well, the, the locator is calling the particles that are coming from the, the emitter. They're traveling towards it. But instead of stopping there, because there's only 50% attraction, they go past it. And then they return again and they go past it. And then slowly, they will start to lose energy and they will be, end up right at the center. So the gold weight is a very important number because it's going to dictate how these particles are, what, what's going to happen once they reach the destination. Are they going to stop there or are they going to continue? You can see that if I put this, for example, to 0.1, only 10% attraction, then there's a lot slower. Remember, there's no forces in here. They go past it. You can definitely see them turning. And they go again and they start to circle this area until they lose energy. And they stop or until I move this guy I want to move let me just up oh, because it's still playing back one second all right perfect if I move it and I'm not gonna rewind because now I have all my particles in here you see I'm not gonna rewind because I want to see I want to show you what happens right so they go ahead and start following me 
So that's what a goal will do. I'm going to hit rewind. I'm going to move this guy back. Now, particles can be goal to multiple objects, not just one. I'm going to have them here. I'm going to select them. I'm going to shift select the other locator and I'm going to goal them again. So right now, this particle system, it has a goal weight zero, goal weight one, goal active zero, goal active one. Um, I don't want to say the word remember, but I'm expecting you to see some of the remember those of the effects power user program lessons. Um, and then if you saw that already, then you should remember that every list in Maya, a list is called an array. A list in Maya, the first item of the list, Maya will identify it with the, with the number zero. So what this means is that this is the gold weight of the first locator that I selected, which is zero, and the second one is going to be one. So that's how you would you know will differentiate which one of the locators I'm talking about here as far as the gold weight goes. Same thing with the gold weight active. If you're going to disable one of them, you can just do it right here. So right now what was going to happen is that these particles have to divide themselves in a way where they have 50% attraction to the locator of the left, on the left side, and only 10% to the one on the right. And at this stage, when the, the points are static, you're just going to average a number in between. But if they were moving, then always the one on the left will have more impact on the particle motion of the, of, of the whole group. So let's see. So you can see that you know this one is a lot higher the influence and then that guy is not doing too much it's only 10 percent i could move it and you will see very very subtle changes in there pretty much nothing because this guy is so strong so and what you can, you can do is just balance it let's say for example 10 percent in one and 50 percent on the other then still be pulling to the left but then any changes on the position of this one will influence the group a little bit more. You can see? So there we go. You can just move them. These particles will do whatever they can to comply with both. Let's say that I want to move that up and out. Then you can see that they get pulled 10%, but then the other one still wins because it's stronger. All right, cool. That's just particles go to a locator. You can do that later. You can keyframe also the value of the attraction. Right now, the goals have disappeared, and then what's happening? They have nothing to do. They just stay. They have no leader to follow, let's say. If I rewind and hit play, then I get my particle system again. Simple as that. So I don't want to go them. I mean, you could go them to a point on... Uh, and, 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 then, and then do the swarm and then say that those are leaders and all, but that's not a very flexible approach. I want to be able to, for my client to tell me, Louis, I think this should subdivide into three groups. And then you run the simulation and then, I don't know, I don't think it looks right. Give me seven groups and then give me five and then give me one and then give me three. Uh, and, and, you know, if I have to start deleting locators and making new ones and animating them by hand, it's just going to be a nightmare for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So what you want to do is just have another particle system that you can control separately with dynamics as well and have the, the main group of birds follow them. That's the key for this kind of shot. So what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab, um, I'm going to create another emitter. And this one is just an omni emitter. I can place it here and you can see the difference. There are my particles and here's my emitter. Uh, I made a mistake and I created an n-particle system. I don't, want, I don't really want to use that yet. I'll use it later, a different lesson. Let me just get rid of it. Let me get rid of the emitter and then make a new one. There. There are my particle. I mean, there's my emitter. And there are my two particle systems. So these particles on the left side are going to be my swarm. And the emitter that will put them out, I'm going to call the swarm emitter. This guy's on the right side of the screen is going to be called my leader. And then we can call that leader emitter. So that way I can quickly find you know what I'm doing here. Um, so the leaders are going to be the subgroups, okay? So the or or 
yeah, let's just say that the number of points are going to be breaking up the main group. So this is going to be a system with very, very few particles. So I'm going to use on my max count for now three. Just three guys. And there they are. Perfect. And don't worry about this. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Okay. So I'm going to grab my swarm and I'm going to grab my particles. Remember that the, um, let's say that the, the slave is selected first and the master last. So if I do it like this, I'm going to grab my particles, I'm going to gold them. Okay. So you can almost, you know, you can start to see roughly that the particle system divided itself. Some follow this guy, some this guy, and some that guy. It's very strong right now, the attraction, because my gold weight is set to 0.5. This list doesn't really update, I mean, doesn't update, doesn't really delete the attributes of the, when I deleted the other, the locators, so it kept gold weight 0 and 1 there. Um, let's just see if you can delete that, I don't remember, let me see. Delete attribute, no. Let me see if I grab the shape node. No. It doesn't let me delete those, but don't worry about it. You know, it's just for the sake of the example. Don't get confused. Remember, what I'm going to do is I put this to zero and that to zero as well. And we're going to be working with go away two, which is the new one. And I'm going to put that very, very low. I'm going to put it up to 0.1 right now and see what happens. Let's see the difference. All right, it's getting better. Remember that there are no other forces on the scene. Let me just see where this error is coming from. Because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's nothing that is breaking the scene, but I don't like to see that red thing down the bottom. Emitter type, emitter opacity, emitter emission. I find it stupid. I don't see what's a big deal there. Why is it erroring out? But there's nothing erroring out of my scene, though, as far as behavior goes. Everything is working. I get, and, and to be able to find the particles easier, the leaders, I'm going to, instead of making them points, I'm going to switch the particle render type to something called spheres. So that way you can quickly find them and see what's working and what's not working. So there they are. So it does work. And if I add more, then the Maya is going to divide the, the particles into the, all the subjects that you have, all the leaders that you have moving around. I think at this stage is good to have um, to reconnect the turbulence and see what it does. So I'm going to grab them both. I'm going to play, put them at 25 and see what happens. It might be too much. So right now the particles have to find a way okay, to satisfy everyone. <laughs> they have to find a way to move around with the turbulence field and also respond to the goal weight that I have. And the force is quite strong. But there they are. They, they're, they're aware of the leader. They just, you know, they're being moved by the turbulence field as well. And on, on this kind of shot, you don't need, you, don't, you know, you have to keep in mind that these guys, these little spheres, are not going to be visible. This thing is acting up. Okay. Um, they're not going to be visible, so don't worry about it. All you need to focus is on these guys. I have them set to spheres just so you can see them right now because obviously we're learning this. But when the time comes, these guys, these three spheres are not going to render. You're just going to see there, that kind of effect. But I think uh, right now it's kind of hard to see them move, um, just to follow something. They just kind of look, all of them look a bit uh, uniform still. Yes, there is, there is noise and there's turbulence, but I don't see... Um, Getting them getting too close, so I think it's time to add up, up you know, the gold weight two a little bit. We'll just try 0.25. Just zoom in. All right, cool. Okay, perfect. So you can see the. It's definitely working. We, we might need some more. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're going to make some changes. Right now, I hate that error, man. It's driving me crazy. Uh, there might be something. 
Form shape, letter shape. I think I know what it is. Let me just. Uh, Let me just see something here. Let me just copy this. Okay, you can see that the error is gone. What I think it was happening is that when I renamed the, the, the field, I didn't rename it on the, uh, on the channel box. If I rename it here, or on the outliner, then both the, the shape node and the, and the object, I'm sorry, the, the shape node and the emitter itself, um, they change names. But I think, I, I was trying to remember what I was doing, I think when I renamed one of them, I renamed just the shape node, or, or you know, I didn't do it right. So that's what it was erring. I was kind of not recognizing its own shape or something stupid like that, but I think it's fine now. So we can play, we can escape, and yeah, that's fine. Everything's working. Okay, so we're going to keep tweaking this to make it look more realistic. What I don't like right now about this, well, a couple of things. Once, uh, the, the first thing I don't like is just the, the motion of the leader themselves, which is kind of boring. So I'm going to connect the leaders to a turbulence field. I could do it to one of these guys, but I think I just want to keep it separate. So I'm going to call it turbulence leader. You could do a high and a low frequency. I'll leave that to you when you have more time in the, at home. For now, I'm just going to put that to zero on the attenuation. Um, and the frequency, I'll put it to 0.5. And I put that to 10. And I'm also going to take the conserve of those particles and I'm going to lower it to 0.98 as always. And let's see what it does. All right, so the leaders are moving. They start to separate. They have a bit more of a erratic motion, which is interesting. So at least that, at least that part is working. But one thing uh, I want to also point out is that these leaders are, you know, getting further and further away from the center. And these kind of shots, the camera guys always always has them in a group. They don't, they don't tend to spread out into infinity. And, and that's something that you know we need to tweak as well. We want to have them within a certain area in here. So there is a force field that we haven't used, uh, at least on its own, we haven't used it yet, um, that would allow particles to be pushed away from a point. But if you invert the magnitude, then we get attracted to a point. Um, so there's one of them that we could use, and it's called the radio field. But the thing with the radio field is that, well, I want to show you, why not? I created one, and I selected the leaders, right? I don't want the, the, the swarm itself to be affected by this force. The radio field is right here. If I zoom in, well, I can't zoom in, but this is just a bunch of arrows pointing from the center out, just the same as... Uh, as what this emitter looks like. Pretty much the same without the box. So it tells you what it's doing. It's just taking particles from this point, which I'm going to put them right in the center again, and it's pushing them away. Um, it has an attenuation. You can put that to zero. And it has a magnitude. For the sake of testing, okay, I'm going to grab these particles, which is a swarm, okay, and I'm going to disable them. If you hit this checkbox in here that it says is dynamic, then they won't be simulated. Because I want to focus first on the behavior of the leader, because the leader the leader is the key. If those guys don't move around correctly or they don't do what you want, then the whole group, because it's following them, then by association, then just stop to work. Um, so you can see that the radio field just pushed them, they pushed them away. And they will continue to go away. The turbulence is doing something, but the force is always pushing them away. If you invert the magnitude, Then the problem with this is that the particles will just zoom in. They'll be born, they will start to be pulled in, and eventually 
they will stop in the center. Um, obviously, the, the turbulence is fighting and it's, it's kind of doing something. But I don't like the fact that these guys are on top of each other, all three. That's not going to be nice. So, yeah, it's doing something, but it's not really interesting. We can probably change the turbulence frequency. Put that back to one and try to break them individually. Uh, I still don't like it much. You can play with these numbers and, and force them to do something different. They start to separate a little. But what I'm trying to say is the point of the radio field is that they will eventually stop them in, in, in that particular point. If I put the turbulence field to zero, you will see that the particles they will eventually come to rest right at the center. So that's not really what I want. What I want is some it's a field that it will kind of let them move out and back in and back out and back in and stay within a certain area. And the, the, the field that I want to use for that is a better one, which is called the Newton field. This one. So the Newton, imagine the, the symbol of the, an atom. Okay? So it's uh, concentrical rings, okay, in the different directions. So this field will push and pull and almost describe the shape of an atom. And this is the, the let's say that the icon that we use or the part for the form. So the Newton fields right here also has an attenuation, which I don't want. And this magnitude now, think of a radio field that will just turn on and off or go from, from a negative magnitude to a positive magnitude. It's almost the same result. All right, so let's see how that what that does for us. And, oh, sorry, I didn't rewind. There they are. So these particles will get pulled and then pushed. And let's just increase the magnitude to see. You have to keep an eye on something as well. Some fields, and not all of them, but some fields come with something called the max distance activated or the min, min distance. So keep an eye because sometimes, uh, right now it's not using max distance, so it's fine. If you were to use max distance, you're limiting the effect up to a certain distance away from the, the beginning of the force or the where the force is located. So keep an eye on that. Right now, let's increase the magnitude and see the effect. All right. Similar to what the radio field is doing, I don't like, I'm gonna increase this distance. Okay, here we go. Let's rewind and play. So this distance, it's definitely using um, this value to work, so I'm going to put that to zero. All right, let's see what that does. Okay, so it's a similar behavior, which is kind of stupid. Um, let me just look in here, my attributes, apply per vertex, max distance, I don't want it, volume exclusion, no. Also, everything is fine here. Volume sweep 360. I'm gonna go crazy with the magnitude and see what it does. I'm also gonna check the conserve of my particles. Yeah, it's fine, it's 0.98. It's pushing and pulling. Let's see when we combine it with the, with the turbulence, what it will do. So grab this turbulence and put this to, let's say, 50. I'm really forcing, making these things work. Okay, it's doing something. They're a bit too close. So I'm gonna grab the magnitude of this and I'm gonna lower it to 100. Okay, I like it, but they're still too close. Okay, 
So I wanted to have some sort of range of motion that let the turbulence push them around, but then have the, the Newton field remind them that they have to stay close. They're still too close. I would like to have them in this area. So what you do is you start loosening up the amount of the magnitude of the Newton field and just let them hang, let them be. All right, so that's good. So that's an attribute that we need to keep in mind. The magnitude of the Newton field is going to dictate the overall size of, of how the distance where the leaders may just separate. Um, and we can incorporate that into our little system as well. All right, so I have now a more interesting motion, a bit more natural behavior for the leaders. So I think I can reactivate my swarm particles. So it's dynamic, turn on. Let's uh, rewind this thing, save it. All right, let's see what we, what we have here. All right. All right, sounds good. Okay, so that part of this, you know, one of the issues has been taken care of. We can always turn it down later. I think it's better to force and amplify the results of the effect at the beginning so you can really see the changes. And then you can start taking all the numbers down and make it more subtle, more natural. But for now, I think it's, uh, it's working well. One thing that remains, and I don't like, is that all the particles of the swarm seem to have the same um, attraction towards the leader. And like I said before, I want to randomize as much as possible this value. So I don't want the particles to have the same attraction, all of them. I want some to be closer, some to be get left behind, some I almost have no attraction at all, because that's, that's the way it works, the natural behavior. But the problem is that if I grab my particles and I go into my channel box, then I have just the one main switch for everything. I can switch the goal weight. I can just say, yeah, you know, we'll try 0.1. It's a lot less attraction to the leaders. And they start to, you know, separate a little bit more, and then, you know, they kind of kind of remember, but they went away. Uh, they know that they're coming back here. There you go. And it could work for some situations. But still, that doesn't solve the problem. All of them have the same number, the same attraction. So that's not the, the solution. The solution is going to be something different. It's going to be with that expression. So this is a point two. All right, so we have something cool. I like it. So how do I place a different goal or a different goal weight on each one of the particles? If you select the particles and go to the shape shape uh, node, uh, on the, if, if I want something to be on a per particle basis, remember that we have to come onto this tab, the per particle array. And here I have a list of attributes that each particle can have a different value. And one of them, as you can see, that wasn't listed before, uh, is now here, it's, goal, it's called goal PP. And then that's the guy who's going to be responsible for assigning each one of the particles a different attraction. This is an attribute that is going to multiply by the main goal weight, right? So whatever the goal PP uh, has, it will multiply by this number, and that's going to be the result that you have. So with that in mind, uh, what I want to do first here is always put my goal weight to 1. If I want to test my expression first, if I want to see the result, because whatever I put here multiplied by 1, it is going to be this number. If I leave it at 0.2, then it's going to be 20% of whatever I specify my expression. Now the next question is going to be what? I, do I want these particles to change? their amount of attraction over time? Or do I want them to be born with a different value and that's it? Well, it's up to you. But in this case, I think it's easier if you're just born with a value and then just stick to that. Some part, let's say that some birds are more attracted to that particular leader for some reason, and others don't, and they stay that way. You could modify that on a runtime basis, on a per frame basis, but that, that's something that you could try in your, in your homework if you want. I think for now, we're going to do what is called a creation expression. We copy the attribute. And here, what I want to do is just randomize it. I want to give each one of them a different number. So I use the random expression. We used it before, when I think was the first, first lesson. 
and you need to specify a minimum and a maximum number. Um, I saw the 0.2 was a very good number for this kind of attraction. Okay, so they're kind of close. Um, and point 0.1 that I tried before, they just went away and then came back later. So I'm thinking somewhere in between, um, sorry, 0.15 and probably 0.3. It could be a good number. So a little bit more than what I have right now and a little bit less. So it's somewhere in between those two values, we're going to place them. Let's see. It could work. It may not work. All right. So now you can see the gold PP has an expression. And these particles will now, when they're born again, they're going to have a new attraction value. So let's rewind, save it, and hit play. All right, definitely much better. You can see now that they have like a little trail. So these guys here will have a higher attraction than these guys over here. And you can actually see the, this in real time. You can select, instead of points, you can switch them to numeric. And if you hit this guy, then you can specify here to show you gold PP. And you can see that these guys have 0.151 as a gold PP value, and the ones closer to the particles here are 0 0.291, 0 0.289, 294, so all close to 0.3. So there we go. Back to points. Good, let's see. I like it. We could tweak it a bit more. Uh, you can play a little bit with the values. Remember now that you have a good, uh, you know, good tool right now, using the gold weight as a main switch. So if you want to have half of what we specified on the expression, you don't have to tweak the expression, you can just tweak this number. And right now we're going to get a lot less attraction. You see, this is a value of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 what? 0 0.5 of what I have, so 50% of what I'm specifying in the expression. The expression set at random between 0 0.15 and 0 0.3, so now will be half of each, each of those numbers. So this is a good way for you to tweak it, and uh, if you put it to zero, there's no more goal. They just go along with the turbulence field. They forget about the leaders. If you want to go back and bring them back to in line, let's say, put up a point seven, and they will rush back in. There you are. They will rearrange themselves. So this is always an effect that you will look from the distance. If you start making putting the camera too close inside the group, then you know, trouble might be. Now I think it's a good time to take the spheres and just put them to points and just forget about them. Then you start to see the real deal. Overall swarm behavior. If you have the spheres visible, then your eye is always going to say, you know, I know what's happening. I don't think I like it. But I think this is working really well. It's a good opportunity for us to try a bit more particles. So grab the this system and then just put 10 times more probably up the rate on this emitter 10 times higher all right still still the minute particle there we go it finished so these are 15,000 birds let's say following only three liters Let's say that we want to have some more leaders and see what it looks like with more. No worries, you grab your leaders instead of three, let's put six. The three more are born, they start to separate, you see? It could happen on, on any, any moment. I mean, if you, if you introduce more leaders, they will just divide themselves and some of them will go with the new guys. You could also try Streaks. Remember the streaks are very cool for this kind of motion. It gives you a little motion blur, makes it more natural. So I like it. I think we have it. This is working. So let's make this into a little system, just like we did before. 
What do you think? I'm going to save my scene. I'm going to make myself a locator. There it is. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to put it to the side, maybe. I'm going to be a little bit faster than the previous lesson because the second time we do it, I don't want to go the same speed in every, every exercise. It's boring. So I'm going to go to Window. If you want to know the why and how and everything, just move back two lessons, I believe, two or three lessons. The description of each video has what we talked about. So um, go there. I'm going to go to my channel control and I'm going to get rid of my rotations. Everything is going to get rid of all these things. I'm going to leave my locator with no attributes on my channel box. Just this guy. Uh, then I'm going to add some attributes. First attribute is going to be what? Let's say just a uh, source size. Source size can be, let me just think, because it could get confusing later because that might be an attribute that we could use for the overall separation of the leaders from the center. So why don't we call that swarm count? I think it's going to be a float because it's a simple number. Uh, minimum number. Let's just not make the mistake from the previous one that we just put it to zero because if I want to have unlimited birds, then I want to have minimum uh, neg negative one is my minimum, no maximum, and a default of let's just say 150,000. I'm going to hit add. That's my attribute. Uh, I'm also going to have leader count. Same idea, negative one, and then no maximum and a default of six, which is what I have right now. I'm also going to have turbulence high. Um, I think we should be more specific. Swarm, turbulence high, because I'm lazy, I'm going to copy this. This is also float with a minimum value of zero. No maximum in a default, I mean, of 25. I'm going to paste that. Low, 0, and also 25. I'm also going to have now my leader turbulence. And that's going to have a minimum of 0, a maximum of nano care, and a default of, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm using, but let's say 50. We'll tweak it later. I'm just adding attributes, remember? Uh, I'm also going to have, let's say, leader. Leader separation, I don't know. It's just how far they want to move around. Minimum of zero. And this, I don't, I don't remember, but let's put 35. What else can we do? Let's see, that's the size. The turbulence, well, of course, the attraction. So we can put swarm um, gold weight overall. And the gold weight is going to be zero. The maximum, I'm going to leave it the maximum open and then we'll see if we need to tweak that eight later. And then this, let's just say 0.5. Yeah. Okay, I think for now we have that taken care of. Let's just go and connect everything. So right now my swarm, my swarm is working. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and connect a few things, the simple ones first. The swarm count is the max count of the, of the swarm system, right? So I'm gonna grab my locator, window, general editor, connection. On my left is my locator. On my right, I'm going to put the shape node. So if you grab the particles like that, it's not the shape node of the particles. You need to hit the down key, uh, the down key on your keyboard. That's a shape node. Reload them here. So I'm going to grab then my swarm count and I'm going to connect it to my max count. Perfect. The next attribute on my list is the leader count. So I'm going to grab my leader particles, hit the down key on my keyboard, reload them on my right. 
and the swarm count is going to be connected to the leader shape max count. Next one on the list is the swarm turbulence high. So I grab my swarm turbulence, I grab my swarm turbulence high field that is right here. You see the naming is very important for this. And I'm going to connect it to the magnitude. Swarm turbulence low, reloaded, low, the magnitude of the low one. You see, it's very, very simple, very quick. Leader turbulence, I'm going to grab my turbulence, reload it, leader turbulence with magnitude, everything is connected. Next one on the list is the leader separation. Leader separation has to deal with the Newton field magnitude. So reload that, leader separation with the magnitude of the leader, beautiful. And the swarm gold weight, going back to this guy, shape node, reload. And I'm going to need the swarm gold weight is going to be connected to the gold weight two attribute, right? So gold weight zero, one are the two locators that we made at the beginning of the lesson that I deleted. And then two is what I need. You see, very simple. I think it took less than a minute to connect everything. Save your scene just in case. Let's see what we get. We're going to get a bit of a funky result probably because, um, all right, you see. We have a problem, well, many problems, but one of them is the leaders are not, um, the leader count it didn't take it. So I probably made a mistake here. Let me just grab my locator. That's my swarm count. Leader count is set to six. Probably I connected things the wrong way. Let's just double check it. Because if I grab my, my leaders, it says my max count is 100, 150,000. So that's not right. If I grab my particles, of the swarm, this is correct, 150,000. So probably connected the two particle systems under the same attribute. So no problems, we grab it. Window, general, connections. And we're gonna grab the leaders, shape node, reload it. And then we're gonna grab the leader count and make sure we connect it to the right thing. Uh, Max count might show up as gray because it's connected to the other guy. So right now the max count, as soon as I connected those two, you can see that now here it changed to six. So that's correct. So that's the first problem resolved. Save it. Okay, so we get six liters. We have a bit of an issue with the um, goal weight. Also with the rate of emission, right now I can see that this emitter is still outputting particles. So let's make sure that our max count right now is 48,000 particles. All right, so I think it's just taking too long to emit, but that's okay. But at least the max count is working. Just right now we're not getting anywhere near the number. Probably I put too many zeros. But yeah, I think it was 15,000 we had in the, in the effect earlier. So that's not a problem. We got, grab the locator. I think just take a zero out of this. Rewind, hit play. Now we should have 15,000 birds. Let's just make sure. There we go. Perfect. But we do have a bit of an issue. Well, I mean, it is working. I just think the goal, uh, the amount of attraction is not enough with the leader, so we need to increase the goal. So grab this, and we have a goal weight set to 0.5. Let's make sure that it's connected to the goal weight of the particles. So goal weight two is set to 0.5, so that's working fine. So grab the locator and let's test it. Let's put back to back to one, hit play. All right, so it is working, everything is fine. I think what I had in the example before we turned it into a little a little system in here, we had it at 0.7. So now it's very easy for you to keyframe the changes and make it you know behave differently. All right, I like it. It's working. It's working really well. We have control over the turbulence and the, the whole thing. Let's make sure that the leader separation value is working. Let's just increase that number to 100, and they should just, let's see what happens. Let's just go into the center. They will go really small. 
Okay, let's find the leaders and see where they are. There they are. Okay, the three little green points. The six little green points, I'm sorry, and they're really close to the center. If I grab this and release them, or the little separation, if I put it to 10, you see the, the group starts to open up and get bigger. If I put that to 2, they start pushing even further away. Excellent. And each one has its own turbulence that you can control separately. I like it. It looks really good. Beautiful. That was quick. Okay, so I'm going to save my scene. And this is one part of the assignment. This lesson will continue. What I will do is pause this one so the videos don't get too long. Um, we're going to move on to the next chapter now, the next lesson. But for this lesson, I want you guys to go ahead and replicate this. Put, play some cameras around and then give me something. It doesn't have to be nature-like. If you want to have something a bit more sci -fi, science fiction oriented, be my guest. I love it. I want to see it. Um, but I think with this, we're fine to, to stop at this point. So, well, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.